In this video, I am going to give you the ideal order of all the rows on your landing page. Let's go. Hey everybody, this is Antoine Dupont and welcome to another video. If you're new here and you're looking for practical and tactical ways to grow your business, then please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so let's just go right into it. I just published a video last week, the 17 hacks for your landing page and someone asked me, okay, got it, but in what order? Here is the comment from Omnia Production. Hello Antoine, and thank for the valuable video again. Could you tell us how you put those 17 recommendations by order on a landing page? So what comes first and what comes at the end when scrolling? Thank you very much. So you're very welcome Omnia. In this video, I am going to give you the order from the top all the way down. Now, if you wanna see that video, the 17 hacks, I'm gonna put a link right here. Just click on it and go watch it. And now watch this one to find out which goes first. Now, the first row, of course, is your main image. Remember, no carousel, one single image, a small logo, a simple navigation. Remember, less is more. We don't need all bunch of links and confusing stuff. A nice headline, a nice subtitle, and a nice call to action. So that is your first First row. Now right below the top main image with the title should be the empathy section. Now the empathy section is actually very simple. I would go with a two column format, a picture on the right or on the left, and small text on the right or the left, whatever you choose. It doesn't matter, the right or the left, it really doesn't matter. Now remember the empathy section should have sentences that starts with, I understand how you feel. Nobody should have to. And like you, I was frustrated with. The mistake that a lot of people do with this section is to start bragging and talking about themselves. And most people are not yet convinced whether they wanna do business with you. The empathy section is to actually show that you care and that you have empathy for their problem. Remember the two most important characteristics that people love in a leader is courage and empathy. So if you show empathy, you'll show that you relate to people and that you understand their pain. This is super important to establish credibility and trust with someone just landing on your webpage. Now the section right underneath the empathy section should be your services or your products, what you actually actually sell. For some people, you only have one, two, or three services, so that's really easy for you, but there are people that have like 10, 12, sometimes 20 kinds of services. Resist the temptation to list them all. It's way too much. I would group them into categories, and I would put up to three types of services that you provide. Remember, this is not the time to overwhelm people or to confuse them with too much choice. Less is more on a landing page. So display the top three types of services or the three categories of services and that's more than enough for people to make a decision. Remember, now it's time to add another call to action below that section. People may be ready to get in business with you because they've seen the title, they've seen the empathy section and they're seeing the services now that you offer. They may be ready to take action. The fourth section right below the services should be the testimonials. This is where you display two and up to four testimonials of people that have used your services. Now, if you think in terms of what we've done so far, people land on your website, they're first seeing an image that conveys what they're going to get. It gives them a great title. Then there's an empathy section. Now it rolls out to the services that you provide. What makes sense next are the testimonials. All of that is done to reinforce and to actually unfold the story so people can actually digest what you're giving them in an order that makes sense for them. Now remember the testimonials should have a picture and something that identifies the person, either a job title or a city or something that actually shows, oh, a person like me likes that company. 
Remember, a testimonial is not a review. Like testimonials are always raving. So what you're looking for is the types of people that actually have worked with you. That's when, again, you're establishing authority and trust. The fifth section right underneath the testimonial should be your awards and certifications. So that section is really any kind of awards and certification that you have. Again, we're continuing to establish authority and trust. We're showing people that we have the recognition and we have the skills needed to do the work for you. Now, not everybody has certification or awards, but sometimes if all you have is a membership to an organization that would be recognizable, that will work. Sometimes people actually list the types of products and services and software and tools that they use in their company that actually would be recognizable. So it doesn't have to be an Academy Award winning award Award, but it could simply be the top four or five types of products that I work with that someone may recognize and say, oh, okay, I see what they work with. Now, if the awards and certification doesn't work at all for you because it doesn't make any ounce of sense, then what you could use for that section is to actually have a quiz. You could ask people to answer two or three questions that would give them instant value and an instant answer to their problem. So you can either put awards and certification if your products and services but if that doesn't apply to you, a quiz could be a great fit. Now, the sixth section right below the awards and certification is the methodology section. Again, the methodology section is designed to reassure people that you have a method to your madness or you have a step one, a step two, and a step three. So it's really reassuring knowing that you have a system in place to actually provide services for me to solve my problem. Now, again, if a methodology methodology doesn't make any sense for you, what you could do there instead is to list the three benefits of working with you. Now, the seventh section right below the methodology is what I call the statistics. You've probably seen a lot of those where a lot of statistics actually are broken down into four different sections. So it can be four different sections. It could be split into three or it could be one single statistic that relates to what you do. Now, please make sure that you actually list the source of your statistic, like this was written on the Harvard Business Review or Wikipedia, whatever source this statistic is coming from is basically to display or to show that you have done your homework. And also to reinforce, wow, I should probably be doing something about that. Now the eighth section right below the statistics is the failure to act section. Now remember, people are gonna make decisions based on two things the benefit I'm going to get and the failure of loss. These are the two polar opposite that basically have all decisions that we made. We're either super excited we're gonna get something we've been looking for or we're really afraid we're gonna be losing what we've worked hard for. Now, most of your landing page so far has been pretty positive in nature. So it's time to actually lay down what is the most predictable outcome if they don't take action. Now, you don't have to go all doom and gloom and just say, oh my God, you're gonna lose your house and all this stuff, but basically tell them, like if you don't do this, you could potentially have this one, two, three, four, five things that happen to you. And you don't want that. Remember, if you go all doom and gloom, people are gonna smell that and they're not gonna trust you. So just be real there. And what I would recommend for this section is again, a two column type of layout. You put on the left what is most likely going to happen. Now on the right side, I would put a simple basic embedded form, name, email, and a phone number and a small message for someone to contact you because that may be a trigger for them. So far, they've been unrolling the website and everything is going great and then they're seeing this and this it's like, oh, I better take action. And now we finally have the ninth and final section, which I call the happy end. Just basically describe the happy resolution of working with you. The four places that you could have a happy resolution for them is financially, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. This section is the icing on the cake. This section should make people say, 
I want that. Now, don't forget below that section to add another call to action, get in touch with us or get your quote today or whatever strong call to action you have because it may be all the way to that final section when people are ready to take action. Now, I'm gonna add a 10th and bonus section which is the ebook download. Now, not everybody has something to offer but you could have a template or an ebook and that would be a great place to put this all the way at the bottom where people are finalizing all the rows after the other that are actually are reinforcing what they're looking for, giving them a sense of trust and authority and now they're getting all the way to the happy end and below that there is a bonus, there is an ebook that I could get or a template. Now in exchange for the ebook, just simply ask for a name, an email address, and that should be all you need. Now of course, you're going to wrap this up with a beautiful footer, and this is the place where you can put your physical address, several phone numbers that they may need to get a hold of. Now in the footer is a great spot to actually put your social media icons. They don't fit anywhere else on the website, they are in the footer, it doesn't help you convert anything for people to know that you have a social media presence. You could also include additional navigation like resources or blog that you have. This is a place where you can have you know several information that is going to close up this landing page beautifully. Now if you follow this order, I know that you'll have a landing page that will unfold for people in a way that makes sense for them and in a way that they'll be able to digest the content and make a decision based on what they're seeing. All right, that does it for today. If you have any comments, suggestions, you know where to put them, put them below. I'd love to hear from you. And before you leave, please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a thing. Ciao.